Hey, it's me, and I'm back. Mm, I'm back. I know that I did post a video last week, but I actually filmed that video before I took my one week break, my annual one week. So in reality, this is my first time filming since the break. It's been a week and I'm brand new. Happy New Year, happy 2023. Changed my background just slightly. It's still colorful chaos behind me, but I moved some things. It's a big day. Anyway, today I'm going to be starting on what is going to be a long journey. It's not gonna be as long for you because I will edit and edit and edit. But for me, it's gonna be a long journey. I wanted to start this year off with a bang and show my appreciation for you guys because I do love you guys. Yes, you drive me crazy sometimes, but I really do appreciate your support and you guys watching my videos. I wanted to give you guys something that you have been asking for, repeatedly asking over and over again. I'm talking about what has been probably the longest ongoing comment bomb situation. And when I say comment bomb, I mean hundreds and hundreds of people repeatedly asking me to do this with varying levels of intensity. This has been going on ever since I painted two playing cards in one of my art things to do when you're bored videos. This was a long time ago. I was in my old art room. Ever since I did that, people have been asking me to paint on an entire day deck of playing cards. You did two? Okay, how about 52? This request is similar to the Rubik's Cube thing, if you were around for that, where people wanna see a different character of mine on every single card. I have many characters, there are many cards in a deck. Yeah, I have refused this request for the past couple years because the amount of time that it took me to paint two cards, front and back, was about four hours. And they weren't even that good. These. I don't know if I'm slow or what, but this was four hours of work. Do the math. For a full deck of cards, that's around 100 hours. And with 100 hours of painting, that would be at least 20 hours of footage, which could be another 80 hours of editing. Oh. Oh. This would probably take me over a month. And let me be real, it does not sound fun. However, I'm still gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it digitally. This is still going to be a huge time commitment. At this point today, I've already been working on this for several weeks. It's long and intense of a process, but I have committed to do it and to finish it. I think I will finish. I hope that I will finish this someday. The reason doing this digitally is going to make it a little bit easier is because digital art is a little faster to create. Also with cards, you have the front and the back design. If I do it with paint, I have to paint the back design as well of every single card, which is gonna be super repetitive and a huge part of the time commitment. If I do it digitally, I can create the back once and then just replicate it for all the cards. So that alone will be a huge time saver. Big part of the reason why doing it digitally is the only way that I will even consider doing this. So you guys wanted this, let's get started. Okay, so the first step is to get down on the floor and do this creepy wave and the face. Of course the face. Okay, that's enough. I have here a full deck of regular playing cards, it's time to get organized. So I laid out the entire deck in order so I can see what I'm working with here. Then I have a bunch of sticky notes with my character's names written on them. And then I place those sticky notes onto the card that they would eventually be on. The characters would be on, the, on that card. Sometimes when I try to explain things, I feel like I just am talking complete gibberish. Dub flib ba soup do boop boop. That's what I sound like, I'm pretty sure. This is actually the very cleaned up edit edited version of this process. What you don't see is the 45 minutes before this where I was agonizing over which characters would be and would not be included. It does just kind of look like a bunch of random characters slapped on whatever card, but ho, 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 I'm Santa. No, <laughs> no. Each character was placed in a specific spot on a specific card for a reason, which I can explain later. This may look like a ton of characters. It is, well, 54, but I want to take a moment to acknowledge all the characters who didn't make the cut. I had to leave out so many. And not because they're not a part of my favorite 54, just because the way I was organizing characters, some just were outliers and didn't really fit into my system. But boy, it was painful. Scribbles, 
speckles, nipple babies. But that's enough pain and suffering. It's time to get started. All right, so hi. I'm at my table with my iPad, and I have on screen just a standard playing card design here that I stole from the internet. I just want to use that to create a little guide for myself so I know just about how much space I need to reserve for the border and the numbers and all that. It's a really ugly guide. Um, we're going to work with it, and you're going to have to look at that the entire time I'm creating these. So <laughs> congrats. Just like that, I'm ready to start designing my first batch of cards, starting with the aces. The aces can either be the most valuable card or the least valuable card. So I've chosen two of my most valuable characters, Pickle and Derp, and then two of my not so valuable characters, which is kind of mean. There's Boops, who in the past I kind of hated, and then there's Frank, and we all know Frank stinks, literally. But I feel like it's only appropriate to start with my most beloved Pickle to be on the very first card I design. Now we have seen Pickle a lot. He's here, he's there, he's here and here. And so I thought it would be cool and fun to try to draw him in a slightly different pose than usual. I got him standing up here, which is, I mean, this is life-changing, revolutionary. Pickle is standing, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. And if you're not excited about that, get out. I'm just kidding. Pickle's looking a little derpy. His derpiness is rivaling the derpidity of the actual derp. But I did end up making some slight adjustments later. Okay, I just needed to get in the groove of this, but there he is. It's my precious Pickle. Say hi. I meant you guys say hi. Don't put that kind of pressure on him. Now for the background, I want to do something pretty simple. I'm thinking we add a nice little gradient back here. Last step, I do want to hand write each character's name on the card. I tried a couple ways. Ugh. Ew. Let's try cursive. Oh no, sweetie. You just can't do that. I do not have the best handwriting, but I really wanted the personal touch of a handwritten name, and that's the best I can do. Boom. That's the pickle card design. Obviously, it's not complete because we still have all the borders and then the little symbols. We'll get there when we get there, but the main artwork is done. One out of 54. Woo! We're doing good. I decided to check the tracked time to see how long this one card took me. 47 minutes. Not good. Not good. I'm panicking. All right, we got to pick up the pace. Moving on to Derp. I'm going to do a nice little sketch of Derp with his favorite thing of all, a cheeseburger. I find Derp kind of hard to draw sometimes. I I've struggled in the past, okay? But I feel like he came out so cute in this. This may be my favorite derp yet. Oh, I love him. I am going to change the background color here just a little bit. My idea is to create a rainbow gradient that travels through each group of cards. Ace of hearts starts with the top of the rainbow, then ace of diamonds is the orange and yellow, and then the rest will continue it. This way, I can just reuse the background with each set of four. Finally, adding derp's name. Just restarting that literally 10 times. Okay, great. Derpy's here. Moving on, next is Frank. Now, Frank does represent one of the lower value characters in the aces, but before anyone tries to get up and fight me to defend Frank's honor, I mean no disrespect to Frank. I just thought it was kind of funny to make the joke that Frank stinks because he's a skunk. But I do actually love him, okay? He's wonderful and he's perfect. Creating the background, of course bringing in the green now. We all know how the rainbow goes. You better. If I haven't taught you that by now, I have failed. And so it's Frank. Woo, we're, we're doing, doing this. this. The last of the aces is boops. So when I was trying to think of the low value characters for my aces, I was thinking like, what characters of mine do I actually hate? The only one that came to mind, I think we all know, is the face of failure. But I decided not to put her on here because she would be the only human character in the entire card set. So I went with Boops instead because initially I did not like him at all. Boops is the worst. And I was so confused why everyone loved him so much. I did end up changing my mind though. I'm starting to fall in love with Boops. Look at him. Zoom in around. This is my formal apology. I'm sorry I said you were the worst. So Boops and I are actually cool now. It was just a rocky start. This card gets a blue and purple background and his little name. So you can see here that I have the four aces done and how the background colors do create the full rainbow. Next group is the four king cards. I've selected these four gentlemen. Well, three gentlemen and a savage. Let's do it. I duplicated the backgrounds of the ace cards so I can use these same backgrounds once again. I'm 
starting with the chicken dad, aka muscle chicken. It's been a while since I've done any art of muscle chicken. This is nice. It's good to see you. You look great. It's, have you been lifting? Lifting weights? Muscles? Chicken? I have him nice and large, really filling the space with those chicken muscles. His name was a little hard to cram in there, but we made it work. Next is Alfred, who is the father of the polar bear family. He looks a little crestfallen. I'm sure nothing is wrong. He's just thoughtful. He's thinking. Some sort of emotional something is happening here. I don't know what it is. Moving on, this is Eustace, who I have hanging upside down. I thought that might be fun. It is fun. The only thing I don't like about the Eustace card is that I would have never chosen this green background as the color to put behind Eustace. The mint green with the lime green. It's not quite, but it is a little don't know what I'm talking about, really. I had to keep it this way to make my whole planned out system work. Okay, nobody's moving. So there are a handful of awkward color combinations, but that's okay. If anyone's gonna get an awkward color combination, it ought to be Eustace. I mean, he is the epitome of awkward. Next is PB, the peanut butter hamster who didn't have a formal name until pretty recently, actually. And this is PB? That's PB. <laughs> of course. And isn't that name just the most creative thing you've ever heard of? This is a pretty pretty old character, but I still love to bring the hamster couple back because I think they are so dang cute. Definitely some of my favorite of the very old designs. And just like that, we are done with the kings. So naturally, we're bringing in the queens next, and I've chosen four of my squishy couples to be on the king and queen cards. So the queens go with the kings, and the kings go with the queens. Okay, right, right, right. Of course, our first queen, it's gonna be the chicken mom, who doesn't actually have a real name. Shh. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. For some reason, I really hate drawing the chicken mom design. I've only done it a handful of times, but I was just really dreading it. I think it's just all the little tiny details and things going on. And I know she looks really sweet, but she can be a little bit of a bridezilla. So everything has to be just so. I did give her the name Miss Chicken because I feel like that's a little bit more of a respectful name than chicken mom. Also, you know, Muscle Chicken. His last name is Chicken, clearly. First name Muscle. So I guess she's uh, taking his last name now. Chicken with the last name chicken because you know all the people with the last name human yes hi this is mr human calling for a miss person next is marlo who i feel like most people probably won't know her name but it definitely is marlo is in the super stoic pose today she looks just as pensive as alfred i don't know what's on the polar bear family's hearts tonight but they may need your support and here's my girl shelly looking just as grumpy as usual and our last queen it's jelly looking oh so excited about heaven knows what. <laughs> And there, all the queens are now done. Next is the jacks. And for the jacks, I've chosen the offspring of each of the king and queen couples. So let's go, Chicken Chicken, clearly the eldest son of Muscle Chicken and Miss Chicken. I drew him real close up on the card, so you can almost hear him. You can hear his screams. Next is gonna be Nat, the baby of the polar bear family. And even she is looking more thoughtful than usual. What is happening with y'all? Maybe they always look like this, and for for some reason I'm just now noticing. Switching to Derek. Now I do believe that Jacks in the cards are not supposed to be childs of the royal couple. Uh, in fact, I don't even really know what the Jack is. Let's read. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so it's not supposed to be the kid of the royal couple. However, this is my deck of cards and I'm doing it my way. Oh, also one other scandal here as we see the baby hamster. I think we established that he is not the baby of PB and Jelly, um, considering he's twice the the size. There's a little bit of a logistical issue there. However, I have not actually designed a child for PB and Jelly. Although my friend Marissa did design a child for them in our collab video, which was adorable. I didn't really feel right about using her design for this since I'm claiming that these are all my characters. Plus, I really wanted to include everyone's favorite giant baby. Baby hams. Let's go with baby hams. So let's just say differences aside, baby hams was adopted by PB and Jelly. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. This is what the polar bear family is witnessing the beauty of this moment. All right, guys, whip into the tens. Ah, we're in the numbers now. Now this group is a little multi-purpose, okay? Since the chicken couple is the only couple with two children, their second baby is spilling into the tens, which then set the whole theme for the tens as babies. It's all crying, snot, blankies, 
babies and poo poo. So let's get started. Baby chicken, once again, no formal name. What the heck was I thinking making a whole family of nameless chickens? Especially considering just how adorable she is. I decided to call her Chicky. She's a baby, chick, she's a girl, chick. It's Chicky. Of course, her full name is Chicky Chicken. Okay, where am I going? Come back here, you're not finished. Next is baby Leon, who is a cotton candy baby lion. I just realized, if he's a baby lion, why does he have a mane? So, so that. Cotton candy lions are different than regular lions. They're actually born with manes. Okay, that's just facts. There, there he is. Then there's Wee Wee. Now, I know Wee Wee needs his Wawee. Oh, I hate myself. He's got a lollipop and that's his comfort item. So, I wanted to include it and I chose this weird vertical orientation. Do I like it? Mm, maybe. Do you like it? Mm, probably not. The lollipop did come out looking a little squished. It's okay. Wee Wee's still cute. The the last baby I threw on the table, it's baby Zuzu, one of the alien bean bodies. And for this, I may have done a little cheat. Okay, I may. What was that? I may have gone to my bean body poster, copied the Zuzu design, and then used that to trace my drawing here. I'm not saying I did, but I did. I just loved that version of Zuzu so much, and I didn't really want it to be any different. And since I have it digitally right here, it was just too easy to do it. Okay, so I had to do it. Now, this is what I've accomplished so far. This is 20 cards, which means I have 34 left, but my time spent on this so far is sitting right around 25 hours. It's scary that it's taken me that long to get the first 20 cards done. I think I actually got slower, probably from fatigue. Considering I still have the editing of this video to do, I think it's probably best for me to break this one up into a two-parter. So I'm gonna leave you here and I will come back next week to finish the remaining 34 card designs and and bringing them to life in a physical form and designing the backs. Woo, whoa, shoot, there's a lot to do next week, I'm scared. It's gonna be action-packed, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to do it since I have at least gotten everything planned out and gotten a nice workflow. Things may go a little faster. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next Friday to finish the rest. Bye.